You join me now here on the MMA Report. Masco be a part of the fight night card in Jacksonville Saturday, May the 16th. Eric Anders, Eric, man, I appreciate the time. Obviously, April 11th, it was only a couple weeks ago, but I got to imagine for you, that seems like so long ago when this fight was initially supposed to happen. Yeah, you know, I guess a little over a month, a month and a week. And, uh, you know, things weren't even certain that this was going to happen until just a few days ago. So, you know, uh, for me, the biggest part of getting ready for a fight is, is the weight cut. So it's not something I'm, I want to do if I'm not going to fight. So I just kind of like teetering, staying in shape. But now the things are going on the way they're supposed to, you know, uh, you know, everything's back to normal for me. So was there a moment where like you're like, man, this fight ain't happening. It's time to pig out. I mean, I think that Dana White was determined and hell bent to be the first guy to to get you know live sports back out there. So um, if it wasn't May 11th, you know, then or excuse me, April 11th, I knew it would be the first possible date that uh, he could have a fight. And uh, you know, it's, it's just a week after. So I knew that when when they did get the green light, that they would happen fast. So I was just staying in shape and you know monitoring my diet. I know I, I talked to Julian Marquez a couple weeks ago. I know he came down to, to train with the team there in Alabama. What's what's training been like? I mean, I know he kind of alludes to, you know, you got a, you know, a small group of guys are working together. Obviously, Walt's got a fight coming up. And what has training looked like? Man, training's been great. Training's been excellent. You know, I feel good. I feel ready. And I, I think Walt does, too. You know, we really haven't changed much. Uh, you know, we were training under the, the cover of night and, and, you know, in the middle of the day when no one was around type stuff. So I've been training and training just like I had a regular fight coming up, you know, under, you know, normal circumstances. So, you know, you know, we kind of hid away from the law and whatnot, but, you know, whatever. I, I know, um, you know, obviously I got to imagine you're happy the Jocko fight stayed together because you'd been preparing so long. It kind of would have been, you know, a little, you know, it would, I mean, you would obviously moved on, but I got to imagine that was like the dream scenario that the fight would remain the same. Um, man, you know, to be honest, you know, I just enjoy fighting and, you know, it really didn't matter who I was fighting, but, uh, we had signed the contract. So, you know, I, I'm just happy that, you know, he was able to stay healthy, stay training, and say, you know, do everything so that, you know, the fight could actually happen. Fighting an empty arena. What's, what's kind of your, your thoughts on that? Like, do, do you think it's going to be a, an interesting twist to kind of what, uh, uh, cause you know, some athletes say they, they live off that crowd energy. Are, 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 is that how, do you live off that energy? And, and do you think that if, it changes things? Um, maybe, you know, but fortunately I, I have a lot of experience, especially like coming up earlier as like an amateur and a pro, uh, early pro down South, you know, it's, not a whole lot of people, I've, you know, so uh, this whole experience has kind of been like, you know, those early, you know, professional fights like, oh, you may or may not have a fight. Stay ready because I don't know, but probably, hopefully, maybe uh, it's going to just show up on the way in day and hopefully the guy is there kind of thing. So, you know, uh, fortunately, I, I had to go through all that. And so I could just, you know, it's the same thing kind of. Does it change coaching? You know, um, obviously, because now the, the coaches don't have to scream out input. They can just kind of talk at a, a normal voice. But does that kind of change the fight a little bit? That the fact of not only are you really going to be clearly able to hear your coaches, but you're going to be able to hear his coaches as well, clearly. Um, Man, I don't think the the volume of the ambient noise is going to affect uh, my coach, Chris. I think he's going to be yelling. He's going to be loud regardless <laughs> of the background noise. So. Uh, that's just who he is. Uh, he's loud and enthusiastic. So, you know, you'll probably have, be able to hear every single word that he says. See, that's going to be an interesting thing because I, I believe your fight will be on ESPN, ESPN Plus. Like, I'm sitting there going, okay, are they going to have to be in major delay? Because, you know, there might be some foul words that come out of Coach's Mouse. Yeah. You know, sometimes they just kind of, you know, come out, you know. Uh, so I, I'm sure there will be some kind of delay uh, because. You know, like you said, like you're going to be able to hear that. But if you don't think like even at the noise of that, there was a crowd that you can't hear the other guys coach anyways, like you can hear everything that people are saying in there. You ever trash talk your opponent where we might all of a sudden now hear that? Uh, Not too much, man. You know, Uh, there's a lot going on in there. So I'm really focused on that. But I don't know, maybe. And maybe I think things will be like a little bit more lax because, you know, just it's it may not feel like. And, you know, everybody's watching you kind of thing, you know, so 
uh, we'll see, man. We'll, we'll, you know, I don't know what the vibes going to feel like, be like, but uh, I know I'm on a mission to go out there and get a victory. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do. What impresses you the most about Jocko's abilities? Um, he mixes it up pretty well. You know, he's got that karate spinning, uh, you know, thing that he does, but he also wrestles and grapples a whole lot in his, in his fights too. So I mean, he's pretty well-rounded. I think he'll definitely have the speed advantage in this fight. So uh, I would expect him to utilize that and the, uh, to try to utilize that in the wrestling, uh, to get a dub. Could, could we see the jujitsu finally come out in this fight? Maybe. I really don't plan on being on bottom, so maybe a lot of top pressure and ground and pound. So. Uh, but, you know, I, I've shown in you know, other fights that I'm more than competent on the ground, with my back on the ground, and, you know, being able to get back to my feet. Have, have you thought about how, you know, how do you believe he ultimately is going to try to attack you? Do you think it's going to be more about him just trying to use his speed to, to try to get on the inside? Um, you know, just watching his other fights, um, you know, he kind of like uh, he throws punches and, and stuff to, to get into those shots and stuff. So I don't think he'll just like come out and like shoot shots like wrestling. He does a good job of, of setting it up with his strikes. So I would imagine his, his uh, game plan is going to be to stay on the outside, you know, wrestle to wear me out, get me tired. and You know, I don't know what he's going to do, man, but we'll see what he tries to do. With, with you living s- somewhat close to Jacksonville, um, will you drive there or are you still planning to fly? I'm getting on a plane, uh, especially fighting at 185, man. The last time I can stay like cramped up in, in a car or on a plane or whatever, then, you know, uh, the less travel time is, is the best, especially after a fight, man. I don't know how the fight's going to go. My leg may hurt, you know, may break my hand, whatever. I just want to get home. I don't want to sit there in a car, and, you know. It takes forever. Yeah, I'm I'm not a long car ride type of person. Like I I, 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 I much rather get in an airplane. Yeah, I'm down for a road trip. Just you know, not right after a fight. I, I feel like when I when I hear Dana White talk about Fight Island, to me it makes me think of you. Like that you would be straight up down. Let's go. That that is where uh, you want to go. Yeah, off top. You know, even when you know initially our fight was going to get moved to Vegas and still be on April 11th. Uh, yeah, cool. Let's go. You know, uh, the location really doesn't matter, but I think especially with Fight Island, you know, it might just be a little extra, extra special. That's like the Kumite, like blood sport and, and Mortal Kombat and things like take a boat out to an island and then, you know, go fight for money. You know? I feel like there would be a lot of guys. You tell them the octagons on a beach, like we're going back to the bow dog fight days. They, they're yeah, like, yeah. man, that, that'd be kind of a, just a cool experience to take a part. In. Is that kind of your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think it would be cool. You know, I would prefer the 73 degree indoor arena versus, you know, sand and, and wind and, you know, the elements and whatnot. But, you know, like I said, you know, whoever I'm fighting, he's going to have to fight in the same conditions I'm fighting in. So, you know, it's all good to me. It, it, obviously, I mean, of course, we have no idea when we're going to get back to, you know, the fights being in front of arenas and that things along those lines. I mean, obviously the UFC would like to do things at the apex. Uh, you know, if your next fight, they come to you and say, you know, cause I know you love the quick turnarounds. You, you, you send me the contract. You're there. Would right. you end up move your training to Vegas? I know you've done a lot of training out there in the past. Would you do that? If that opportunity came about? Um, no, nah, probably not, man. I think they're police in Vegas a whole lot more than they're, they're definitely police in Vegas way more than they are. Uh, Birmingham. So, uh, I can kind of get away and, 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 you know, go, you know, sneak around and do my training uh, probably a lot better than I could in Vegas. So, you know, at least my, my training is consistent and it's good training here. So uh, I'd probably just stay here. So obviously the kids are home uh, a lot more now with, with everything going on. Uh, how has that been just as, as Eric, as the father with, with the kids always at home and, and have you found yourself kind of, you know, doing some things that maybe normally you haven't done in the past? Yeah. You know, we have a lot of time together, so, you know, they wake up, they do their homework and then, you know, they're free for the rest of the day. Yesterday we went out there and uh, prune some roses, you know, trim some roses, got our landscape on a little bit. Uh, we're actually building a gym, uh, on the side of our house, uh, for the boys, uh, so they have somewhere to go wrestle around in and, and not in the house. So, you know, they, they can really go, you know, live in there and, 
and, and save the house. So do you have a greater appreciation for teachers at this point? Yeah, absolutely, man. I've always appreciated teachers. Just, you know, even as an adult now, looking about how I act, in, you know, in school and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it's been putting up with 29, 30 kids at one time. Ooh, that's got to be rough. Um, my wife's a teacher, and every time I see these, these videos come across Facebook of comedians who have done like these, you know, basically like, I need you, I, you got to take my kids back. I, I, I just, yeah. to me, it's just, you know, knowing obviously with my wife, it, it's just kind of, you know, uh, but yeah, because here in Florida, it's all virtual learning. Yeah, yeah, they they, uh, they have like tasks and stuff. They have, they have, yeah, they have a Chromebook the school gave them and stuff. Uh, so they do all their homework on the on the computer and whatnot. And then, you know, we just... I go train. Sometimes they come train. We wrestled around for a while yesterday. We've been shooting guns. Yeah, you know it's cool. So do they? Know. Do they have the the competitive itch that you and your wife both have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a little bit different, man. Like I don't push them to like. Not everything is a competition. Like you don't remember the last eight year old world champion. Like nobody does. So don't like overdo it now. But then because nobody, it doesn't matter at this point. But then when you get older, you know, circumstances change, money gets involved, you're older, uh, then it really matters. So just have fun with it now. And then if, this, if you decide that, you know, it's what you want to do, and then, you know, don't don't make it not fun by trying to win all the time, you know. Because of our world and everything going on, I, I have to imagine fight week's a little different for you. Um, is the family still coming with you? Um, my wife, I'm sure she'll find a way find a way to uh into the hotel and whatnot you know and uh man you know she's a breath of fresh air uh on fight week anyway so um yeah you know uh the kids won't be there i guess nobody will be there but the fighters and stuff so it's not like you know there's a lot to do anyway so yeah man i'll keep them at home and you know, go do my thing, come home, and then, you know, we plan on going to on vacation to Brazil at the end of May. So we'll see what happens. Does it make fight week easier because there's literally no distractions? Like there's not like, you know, people hanging around the hotel. It's just people are there to work. Does that make it? Do you think it's going to make it easier and, and maybe more eye on the prize type situation? Man, you know, uh, especially when I'm fighting 85, man, I'm not really in the best of moods. Uh, so I'm really not around people anyways. I just stay in the room until it's time to like get up and go for a run or get up and work out or, or eat or whatever. Uh, so I don't really too much think it's going to affect me too much at all anyways. And of course this all goes down here on Saturday, May the 16th UFC fight night. I'm not sure exactly what we're calling this car. I guess UFC fight night, Jacksonville three, <laughs> whatever yeah. we're calling this, but Eric, man, as always uh, appreciate the time. Of course, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. And of course, anything else you want to shout out, man. Man, appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you guys can follow me, Eric, at Eric Anders, E-R-Y-K-A-N-D-E-R-S. Uh, and thank you to Infinite CBD, uh, keeping things moving. Rev gear, of course. Uh, you need the training gear and whatnot. So uh, big thanks to those guys.